One of the most important pieces of equipment we use on the rig is the swivel. Without it, the process of rotary drilling would be impossible. Basically, the swivel is a large piece of machinery, weighing as much as three tons and almost 10 feet in length, so you're not working with a toy. The swivel is a rotary tool which hangs from the rotary hook, allowing the drill string to be suspended and allowing free rotation of the string. It also provides a connection for the rotary hose and a passageway for the flow of drilling fluid into the drill stem. Since the swivel is so large and so valuable to the drilling operation, you might think the swivel is complicated in design, but it's not. In this program, we'll cover the day-to-day -day care and maintenance of the swivel, such as A. Procedures in lubricating the swivel, both oil bath and grease. B. How and when the packing assembly should be replaced. C the redressing of the packing assembly. Now the swivel is placed right in here between the hook and the kelly, allowing the drill stem to rotate. The swivel is made up of a number of different pieces, so let's take a look. First, the housing. The housing is a steel casting designed to support the load of the string and provide an oil bath enclosure for the rotating parts. The housing is then supported by the bale, the bale is attached to the housing by two bale pins, one on each side. Next, we find a half moon shaped pipe appropriately called a gooseneck. The gooseneck connects the swivel to the rotary hose and allows the drilling fluid to flow from the rotary hose into the swivel. Now the wash pipe functions as the fluid passage between the stationary and rotating parts. You can see how the fluid flows from the hose, through the gooseneck, and into the wash pipe. It's part of the sub-assembly which consists of a ring nut with packing rings and packing in the packing housing. We'll go into a little more detail about the packing and packing housing later. Moving on down the swivel, we'll find an upper oil seal running against a wear sleeve. The purpose of the seal is to keep mud and water out of the top of the housing. Attached to the main housing, you'll find the housing cap. The cap supports the gooseneck and encloses the top part of the housing. Next, you'll find the stem or body. The stem, which rotates in the housing, allows the drilling fluid to flow into the drill string from the wash pipe. Now, the stem rotates on three different bearings, the upper bearing, the main bearing, and the lower bearing. The upper bearing simply keeps the stem centered inside the swivel. It also absorbs the upward thrust of the stem when the swivel and kelly are set back into the rat hole. The main or radial thrust bearing supports the weight of the drill string and everything that's below the swivel. And finally, the lower bearing. This bearing simply limits the radial motion of the stem, keeping it centered inside the swivel. Next, you'll find two lower oil seals running against a wear sleeve on the swivel stem. The purpose of these seals is to keep the oil in the swivel housing. When the seals wear down the surface of the sleeve, it is recommended that the seals and spacers both be moved so that the seals have a new surface to ride on. This extends the usable life of the lower sleeve and still provides effective sealing of the unit. That's really all there is to the swivel as far as parts go, but there's more to keeping it working and in good working condition. The swivel is designed rugged for long life, but like any piece of machinery, it requires periodic maintenance and inspection to ensure safe operation. There are two subjects you should be familiar with concerning the day-to-day -day maintenance of the swivel. They are proper lubrication and the inspection for leaks and wear. When you're checking the swivel for proper lubrication, remember there are two different types required. One is an oil bath. Can I hold it right there? 
the other is grease lubrication. Earlier we talked about the upper bearing, the main bearing, and the lower bearing. Well, all three operate submerged in an oil bath inside the housing. Be sure when you fill the housing to use an extreme pressure type gear lubricant. Oil well recommends Agmaspec 250.03. If you're not sure, by all means, check with your driller or mechanic. The oil level should be checked every day using the oil dipstick in the housing cap. Remember, since the dipstick serves as a breather for the housing, be sure to put it back in before you use the swivel. And by all means, never let the swivel run with an insufficient amount of oil. Also, be careful not to overfill the swivel. Maintenance of the proper oil level is very important. If you find a leak or think you have a continual loss of oil, be sure to let your tool pusher know. He may want to take the swivel out of service before the problem gets worse. Sometimes you might come across contaminants in the oil, indicated by noticeable traces of mud or other substances on the dipstick, or even a rise in the oil level when no oil has been added. If you find this type of contaminant, be sure to locate and correct the problem. Then change the oil immediately. Otherwise, regular changes should be made according to the PMS timetable or every six months. Now the other form of lubrication we've mentioned is grease lubrication. All parts that use grease as a lubricant should use a lithium-based grease to ensure a good grease base. There are three areas on the swivel that need this type of greasing. They are the upper and lower seals, the bale pins, and the packing assembly. In the oil well swivel, the upper and lower seals should be greased every day without fail. One or two pumps from the grease gun is adequate. In this case, too much is as bad as not enough. Over greasing will force grease out of the seals and into the oil bath area, eventually causing a contamination of the oil bath. The fittings for the upper seal are located right here on the housing cap. Take your grease gun and hit it with a couple of good pumps. The lower seals are greased through fittings found on the lower bearing retainer in the vicinity of the seals. Greasing the lower is done the same way you would the upper. The bale pins and packing assembly are both greased through fittings found on each. On the bale pins, the fittings are on the pin. The fittings for the packing assembly are located about midway down the assembly. Be sure that they haven't worked themselves loose especially if there's evidence of leaks. Earlier, we mentioned that there really isn't that much to do when maintaining the swivel, but there is one other important function that needs to be done on the rig, and that is replacing the worn wash pipe and packing. This job should only take about 30 minutes to do, so it's really not that complicated. Since the packing is expendable, time and use will cause it to wear out. Now the life of the wash pipe and packing depends on such things as mud pressure, mud temperature, sand content of the drill fluid, rotating speed, and proper lubrication. Also a misaligned housing cap will cause wear. Usually this is caused by mishandling or abuse such as lifting the swivel by the gooseneck. Although the gooseneck looks like a convenient hook to attach to, it can cause damage to the swivel and will lead to misalignment. So when you're handling the swivel, always use the bale. That's what it's there for. You may talk to 50 different people about when you should change the packing in the swivel, and probably you'll get 50 different answers. But a good policy to remember is, if you make a thousand hours with your packing, Go ahead and change it out because undoubtedly it'll go out on you when you're on bottom. The wash pipe and packing assembly is designed in a cartridge which makes removal and replacement easier. Ideally, there should be a spare unit already dressed and ready to be installed when your old one goes out so you avoid rig downtime. 
Now, when you're ready to remove the old wash pipe assembly, be sure to identify the ring nut that's attached to the gooseneck and the packing housing that's screwed onto the swivel body. The wash pipe and ring nut both have a counter bore that accepts a three quarter inch bar for loosening. One other thing, if you try to loosen these nuts in the direction you normally do for other pieces of equipment, all you'll be doing is tightening the nuts. Remember, these are left-handed threads, not right-handed, left-handed. So be careful not to strip them when you're taking it apart. Go ahead and loosen the ring nut and unscrew it from the gooseneck. Then, unscrew the packing housing from the body. This will allow you to slide the cartridge assembly out of the housing cap so you can check it out. It's so important to limit downtime to as short a period of time as possible. So to save valuable time, break out your spare wash pipe packing assembly that's been redressed. Before you install it back into the swivel, be certain that the O-rings are properly installed. Also, be sure both mating surfaces are clean and free of dirt. Once you've done that, then you're ready to install the assembly back into the swivel. Take the unit and slide it up between the body and the gooseneck, making sure the unit goes in with the housing down. Remember, housing down. It will screw in upside down, so be careful to get it in right. Then, using your bar, screw the housing onto the body and the ring nut to the gooseneck. Remember, they're left-handed threads. Never tighten it down too tight. A moderately tightened housing is all you need to prevent the packing assembly from rotating inside the housing. Next, pump one or two squirts of grease through this fitting. Don't forget, too much grease is as bad as not enough. Well, that's all there is to it. Your assembly is complete and the swivel is ready for service with very little downtime. At your first opportunity, redress the old assembly and make it ready to be used the next time it's needed. To break the unit down, first remove the snap ring from the wash pipe. Then pull the ring nut assembly off the wash pipe and remove the packing and spacer ring. Then, turn the housing assembly over and remove the wash pipe and packing. Lay all the parts out on a clean surface and inspect all metal parts for wear, burrs, or damage. Most of the time, you'll reuse the wash pipe, but there are times when a new one should be used, like this one. It's worn down because the packing was too tight and was run too long. Be sure to inspect the housing, the metal spacer rings, and the ring nut for wear. Then determine if any should be replaced. Now to reinstall the new packing, take the ring nut assembly with the threads up and slide it onto the wash pipe. Be sure the O-ring in the ring nut is still in its proper place and hasn't worked its way out. Then take the new packing and place it inside the top adapter ring. Once the two are seated properly, slide them onto the wash pipe. Go ahead and place the snap ring on so the packing doesn't slide off when you turn it over. When the snap ring's secure, turn the unit over. Now you're ready to work on the packing housing. The unit should be upside down with the threads up. This way, the last item will be inserted first. Be sure the new packing has a good coating of grease before you start repacking. Take the adapter ring with a new packing ring on top and place it inside the housing. Another spacer and packing ring. Then another spacer and packing ring. Now the lower adapter ring.
lift the housing onto the wash pipe and slide the pipe through the packed housing unit. Place your snap ring on and finally replace the grease fittings back into the unit. You've done it. You've replaced the packing and wash pipe. Now the cartridge is ready to be used the next time it's needed. As you can see, this was the wash pipe packing unit from an oil well, PC500, but the process for all oil well swivels is pretty much the same. Well, we covered quite a bit in this program. The purpose of the swivel, the different parts of a swivel, the day-to-day -day care, lubrication, inspecting the swivel for wear, removing the worn wash pipe packing assembly, the installation of the new wash pipe packing assembly, redressing the assembly, and finally, reassembly. This swivel is a well-designed and well-built piece of equipment. If you follow these routine maintenance and lubrication procedures, you'll be safely on bottom and turning to the right for many towers to come.